and firm. And then this is where I'll just cut off my edges. You know, and you could line it right up perfectly if you wanted, but I like to leave extra just in case. You know, what if it frayed while you were putting it on or something and you didn't have any extra to cut it off. And I do notice I have some sticky strips showing, so I think I'm going to try and tuck that under somehow. I'll do that off the camera. All right, so there we go. There is the front part. I am working on the front now, so what I'm going to do next is my baker's twine. I did, I'm did. i going to do mine in white, and the, the way I cut this is I cut um, three pieces. I just laid it across and just cut it. There's no dimensions. But what I want to do is I take my just regular tape off my tape runner. I'm going to fold this over. I want to make sure my three pieces, I know it's hard to see white on white here, so you want them spread apart like so, like this. See how they're probably, I don't know, about an inch, a quarter of an inch, I mean, um, apart. This one's kind of doing crazy things. Okay, there we go. Cut off my excess because I don't need that little piece hanging over of tape. Now this is kind of the crucial part because you do want to make sure these are all three straight across. Okay, I'm going to take another piece of tape. Make sure you don't have your... Gosh, this little piece of sticky strip is just clinging everywhere. Okay. I'm just going to take those three, kind of pull them tight, flip it over, and I'm just going to eyeball it with these across. Okay. I don't know why I didn't do that sooner. And then you can kind of just move them about just a tad. A little piece sticking up. Okay, that is done. Now we'll take back our three dimension piece and this is going to go on like this. All right, but you know what? Before I do that, let's just get our last piece on in the back. I'd rather work on the back first so we're not struggling over that piece, the front piece. Oh, and what I will do, though, I'll show you in a minute. I'm going to use sticky strip on these pieces when I adhere it to the the main piece because this will be hanging, and I want to make sure it hangs well. So what I'll do is I'll put sticky strip. I just use, oh, that's a thin one. I don't want that thin one. All right. Make sure you put it on the bottom. And like I said, the way I can tell it's the bottom is it's that um, stitched piece that comes on with your die when you do it. And then I'm just going to do regular because this is where my paper will go. This is where it's going to actually stick to the um, 3D piece. I'm going to call that the 3D piece. I don't know what else to call it. So we'll take this off. And remember, I'm going to do the, bu the back piece so we don't have to go over. You don't want to put it all the way down like this. You want to have an overhang. So let's do it from the back so you can see. You know, just make sure it's even. Let's see. Probably like that. Okay, got a little even on each side. This is pretty much even with this. Looks great. Then what I'm going to do is also take a piece of sticky strip on here. Where is it? Same deal, just actually on this piece too, I do do it on the sides and that's because you, you're going over this piece of chipboard and I want to make sure my side is going to stick right to my sides. You know, I don't want it to come off. 
Okay, and the top is not a problem with that. Okay. So let's just go, I got a piece of glue hanging over, and we're gonna do one of these. So when you put it over, it will look nice. And then I'm just squishing my sides. This is why I wanted to put my sticky strip here so my paper won't come up. Because it is just a little bit of space. It's not giving you much room. Okay, see how that's together? And there's my back piece. All right. We already did our front. And we're going to do the same thing. We're just going to put a piece of sticky strip on the bottom. Because this piece is what will be hanging. will be attached to the main body portion and then I do this all the way around and I'm doing that first even though I'm not sticking paper to it yet that's just so when I go to put on my back piece I already have at least some glue sticking there now for this just make sure that it lines up with your um, back piece. And like I said, if it's a little off, you're not going to notice it at all. Isn't that cute? Oh, I love these colors together. So I'm just going to press. And like I said, so I already have some sticky stuff there. Now I'm going to use my sticky strip again on here and around my sides. So what this is going to do, it's going to cover our you know, baker's twine that we put on. Okay. And now I'm going to add just in the middle and the top some extra adhesive. Okay. So we'll just match this up. And press. I'm just gonna press everywhere. Do another one of these pressing down here. Okay, beautiful. Look at that, it's so cute. All right, now here's the trick to do our bells. Like I said, Stampin' Up! came up with these little bells, but you know, they're a little tiny to get your, um, your baker's twine through. So, Let's see, here we go, there it is. Have you ever seen one of these? This is, um, I don't know if you can see it, but you're gonna poke this little wire right through the hole. I probably should get my glasses on for this. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just gonna open up this little wire piece. Can you see that, guys? Maybe it's too close, I probably, but, now you slide your white baker's twine through here. Oops, it fell. Like, whoops, fell again. Fell right through. Okay, now I'm pulling it right through my hole. Voila. There you go. And now you can just tie this on. So I just tied it in a couple multiple um, knots. Alright, so I'm not going to go tie that again, but that's how I got those on because they are tiny. Alright, so what I cut these pieces at were about 7 inches long. And now I am going to put them together. I have a small and a big one. The big ones are not from Stampin' Up. I should hate to say. I wish they'd come out with different sizes when they do this stuff. And what I did was I just tied a knot. Oh, and don't make sure, you know how when you tie your shoes, you make sure they're even. You don't want to do that. Make sure one's shorter than the other. Yeah, now I did it. So one is longer than the other. You can now slide this if you want it in the middle, to the side, whatever you want to do. I'm going to tie another knot, but I'll do that at the end. And then what I did for this piece is um, this is from the Bingo Bit set. 
I love this set. You, this is going to be great for any accents. And I used, for this one, I used the bell. For this card, I'm going to use the tree since we have some green. And I already took that out. And I actually need to get the white. I used my old olive. I also love these colors, you guys. I'm so happy this came out so well. There's my old olive. And then I used my 1 and 3 8 circle. And we're just going to cute. Now the to and from, I mean you can use from any stamp set. This one happens to be from a retired set which is the Christmas Punch. Remember this set? This was like about maybe two years ago. Um, and there's my to and from. And then I just put it on an old olive circle like this and I popped it up with a dimensional so I'm going to do that off camera because I think the tape is getting too long and then I'll just put that on and I think that came out really cute I love these colors from this the um letters to Santa pack so thank you for joining me today and there you go there is your finished product um one other tip though I do want to give you this is the one I made earlier I did not use the chipboard so you can see it's it's flimsy I mean, you can fill this with treats, but since I was using this candy cane, which is heavy, it's shower gel, it's going to make a cute little gift, I didn't want it to bend and all that. Plus, I don't think you can really hang this one up as well. Oh, I forgot about that part. So to hang this up, I just used my crocodile, and I set did the setting for the 3 16th hole, the biggest hole. I did it at half... I slid it over at a half um, half an inch. And then just go in. You know, you decide where you want to put your hole. But I just did it basically. You don't want it too close. And then I'm just going to take my satin ribbon. I don't know. I mean, you decide how long you want it. Maybe like this. I don't know how many inches that is. But um, I think that should be fine. To match our ribbon this right through and then you're going to be done and it's going to be able to hang because it is sturdy and another thing this will be sturdy enough for you too it actually is um without a doubt because it, it's not that wide that it's going to buckle on you so i mean it's been holding that candy cane just fine there you go and then to tie this i just will make sure your ribbon is straight All right, and then just tie it in a double knot like this. Take both strands and just pull them up through. Tie it tight. And then I would just take your scissors and make sure that you got the, the knot frayed. And then I just put it into the back. Like so. And then you got your little hanger. All right, so once again, thank you for joining me, and we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye.